I'm Kelly Wright. I'm Nayara Huck. We begin this hour with a look at the devastation in six states after deadly tornadoes ripped through communities during the night. Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, and Tennessee were all impacted by this weather system. In Kentucky, one tornado stayed on the ground for more than 200 miles. That's where we find the greatest damage and death. Take a look at the damage from a bird's eye view. Entire communities leveled. Today, Kentucky's governor says at least 60 people are confirmed dead, more than 100 unaccounted for. The victims ranging in age from five months old to 86 years. President Biden plans to travel to Kentucky on Wednesday to visit victims. He plans to ask the EPA to assess if climate change had a role to play. FEMA's administrator warns this is our new normal, calling climate change the, quote, crisis of a generation. You know, I think it's incredibly unusual. We do see uh, tornadoes in December. That part is not unusual. Um, but at this magnitude, I don't think we've ever seen one this late in the year, but it's also historic. Um, even this, the severity and the amount of time this tornado or these tornadoes spent on the ground is unprecedented. Deanne Criswell also said FEMA is working to develop system-wide projects that can better protect communities. Families, of course, want to protect themselves now. These tornadoes were predicted, but gaps in technology make night tornadoes more deadly. I believe that this is going to end up being an E5 tornado, which you can have the warnings, but what do you do, right? Um, the homes that sit, if you haven't been down there, it, it didn't take the roof off. That's what we're used to seeing with tornadoes, right? That if you get to your safe place, you're safe. You get to the basement, you're safe. There's, there's no safe place when you get hit by, by something like this. So what do you do when the warning is not enough? Dr. Marshall Shepard, a leading international expert in weather and climate, says checking for severe weather alerts must be the new normal for families before they head to bed. He writes, families should brush their teeth and check for tornadoes. It could be the difference between life and death. He joins us live now to discuss it. Dr. Marshall, welcome to the world tonight. Let's first talk about this historic nature of the tornado. You wrote that the three worst scenarios played out here. Explain what those scenarios are, please. Yeah, it was a worst case scenario from the standpoint that they were nighttime tornadoes. Uh, we certainly know that nighttime tornadoes can be devastating because people aren't really thinking about these things as they go to bed. They, they just go to bed and, you know, hope for, the, hope for the best. The other thing that was really a worst case scenario magnitude, it was a long track tornado uh, on the ground, uh, affecting four states. We're calling it a quad state tornado. And then thirdly, just the time of year. I think there's a perception that uh, we don't have tornadoes in December or that we can't have uh, this type of weather at this type of the year. And, and we can. It's rare, but it does happen. So all of those things conspired for this disaster. As we move closer to March, right, much of the South could end up being under the threat of spring tornadoes. So how is climate change affecting the severity of tornadoes and, and what this means for the future? Well, you know, it's a lot of misinformation flying around about the climate change tornado link. I, I'm a climate scientist, so uh, let, me, let me be clear. Climate change is real and it is impacting several aspects of extreme weather from hurricanes to, to, uh, to floods, to drought and heat waves. Uh, the connection is a little uh, less clear with tornadoes. Uh, we think there are some broad changes in the atmospheric patterns that could be linked to climate change, but there's no real conclusive study at this point that links more tornadoes to climate change. That doesn't mean we won't discover that there is a connection. The scientific literature is not conclusive, but we do know that there is a shift of tornadoes more so from the Great Plains, Oklahoma and Texas, into the Mid-South and into the Southeast where these tornadoes happen, and as your graphic is showing, and that may have some connections to climate change. The studies are still emerging, and so I just caution uh, that, that we have to be a little careful in throwing those connections around, but we certainly are looking into it from a science perspective. 
Yeah, it makes sense, Dr. Shepard. Uh, this, this, uh, uh, let's call your attention to the devastation this storm has called. It's the governor stating that he will likely, uh, he's, he's assuming, but he's believing that it was an F5. I mean, you look at the destruction, it was just like blowing bricks apart. And here's a statement from him earlier today, Governor Andy Bashir. Let's listen. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard. Um, we've had a pandemic the last two years. We've had a historic ice storm. We had flooding that had some of our eastern Kentucky towns underwater. And, and, and now we have this. Um, we'll push through all of it because we don't have a choice. Um, and we're strong enough to do it. So, a doctor, lot of the you can see has... that he's actually trying to keep it together. Uh, what what aspect of this storm and trying to bring people together to deal with the aftermath, how difficult will that be? It's going to be tough because this is an area, as we see more tornadoes in the south and in the mid-south, it's already a, a region that's more vulnerable, has socioeconomically vulnerable populations, more marginalized populations, poor, African-American, Hispanic. Uh, has uh, structures and facilities that aren't built to withstand EF4 and EF5 tornadoes. And so uh, this is a reality that we do have to face as we are seeing that shift of tornadoes into the South. Uh, and for uh, the audience that may be watching BNC, uh, a lot of uh, African-American and Black people live in the South, and we're seeing more activity. So I encourage us all to ramp up our knowledge and our response and our awareness of severe weather, not just in the spring, but at any time of the year. And while we still have you in the last minute together, uh, help us understand the conversation around the inconclusive science around climate change, but also the awareness, right? The feeling that tornadoes in December don't feel normal. Yeah, so climate change, the science is very conclusive in many areas, just not related to tornadoes. There's still some uncertainty of whether we're seeing more tornadoes. In fact, one of the reasons we're seeing more tornadoes is that we just have Doppler radar, so we are observing more of them that were missed in the 60s and 70s. But climate change is real. Humans are causing it in part, and it's affecting much of our extreme weather, just not in the tornado area. And so that's where we have to uh, really focus on this. We've had tornadoes in December before. This is not a first of its kind of event. It is a rare event, but I'll mention this. There's no tornado season like we have a hurricane season. You could get a tornado at any month of the year. That is a helpful clarity, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out what preparedness looks like in this new normal. Dr. Marshall Shepard, a leading international expert in weather and climate, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Ahead on The World Tonight, big developments in the George Floyd murder case.